And this is when Lyra, one of the main characters, is coming back to Stockholm, feeling not super happy to be back. <coughs> and it's just two pages. <coughs> I landed at Arland in the midst of feeling sort of free because I was alive. Freed from my ex-husband's sticky web. The colors seemed bolder, my body lighter, and everything seemed possible as I stood there by the baggage carousel, waiting for my bags. Welcome to my hometown, said all the famous faces, blown up huge on the walls. Then I jumped on the train into town. It was classic Swedish spring sun, cold and clear light that gave the illusion that it was warm out if you were sitting behind a pane of glass. I looked out at the ancient forest landscape that still surrounds Stockholm and felt all my enthusiasm vanish. What the hell am I doing, I thought. How can I voluntarily be on my way to this fucking backwater town? Am I really going to waste my life in this nowhere land when there's a whole world out there? And at that point, I wasn't thinking about Brussels. I was thinking bigger than that. I was thinking Sao Paulo. I was thinking New York. I was thinking Beirut. I was thinking about anything that wasn't an adorable little city center with a few buildings from the Middle Ages and a castle that looked like barracks and then three measly little metro lines and an inner city surrounded by industrial areas while everyone talks about how the city can't grow any bigger. And then and there, before I had even arrived, I felt I had to get away, that this was a trial period. I promised myself I would stay for only six months, a year at the max. I refuse to become one of those people who get stuck in a place just because it's comfortable, who meets someone and takes out loans and buys an apartment and imagines that this shithole of a city with its nervous baristas and bartenders who drool over celebrities and racist bouncers and narrow-minded politicians and redneck police force is the norm, who, who forget that Stockholm is an anomaly, a tiny goddamn backwater populated by peasants as far north as you can get, a city that completely lacks purpose and is so afraid of its own shadow that people don't talk to each other even when the metro stands still in a tunnel for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's the only city in the world where newborns learn how to avoid eye contact. <laughs> you see it in children who grew up somewhere else. They come here and think that people will fawn over them on, in the metro. They flutter their eyelashes, they offer pacifiers to dogs, but their fellow passengers quickly let them know the score. Not a single glance up from the phone, not a single smile from anyone in return. Like, mum, like mummies, like pillars of salt, they go back and forth to work or from work. Each fellow human is treated like a beggar. And if there's only one thing I must remember, it is that this is not everything. There is a way out. There is always a way out, I thought, as the train approached the city. <laughs> 